The year is 3345 BC. The Indus Valley civilization hasn't even entered its mature phase. Europe hasn't touched metal yet. China is still in its Neolithic age. And in a forgotten village in South India, someone is melting iron. Not copper, not bronze, iron. A technology so advanced, it wasn't supposed to exist for another 2,000 years. We were taught that the Hittites of Anatolia invented iron and the so-called Aryans brought it to India and that the South was late to civilization. Well, they were wrong. The story didn't begin in Turkey. It began right here in Bharat. This is the discovery that collapses timelines, exposes colonial lies and proves once again that India didn't follow history. It made it. They say the Iron Age began around 1500 BC in Anatolia, where the Hittites, an Indo-European empire, supposedly mastered iron smelting. And for decades, historians repeated it. So did Western institutions. So did our textbooks. They taught us that India was late. That iron came with the so-called Aryans through the Northwest and slowly spread across the subcontinent. And well, South India, barely mentioned, labeled tribal, backward, always the recipient, never the innovator. But the entire framework, North to South, Steppe to Sindhu, isn't history at all, but colonial storytelling. What if it was the opposite? Because in 2023, that's exactly what was found. And it didn't come from theory. It came from the ground. Now let's talk about what they discovered in Shivagali. In 2023, a team of archaeologists began excavating a site in southern Tamil Nadu, a village named Sivagali. What they found silenced every narrative we were fed about India's so-called Iron Age. Not myths, not oral traditions, but artifacts. 84 objects, knives, arrowheads, rusted iron fragments, and most importantly, evidence of smelting. Not just use, but manufacturing. Hidden in a pot under layers of earth, they found traces of charcoal fused with iron remnants. The perfect sample for carbon dating. So the team didn't rely on one test. They sent it to three different institutions. One in the United States, one in Ahmedabad, and one in Lucknow. All three came back with the same result. 3,345 BC. Not 1500 BC or 1000 BC, not even 2000 BC, but over 5,000 years ago. And to make it irrefutable, they used AMS dating, the most accurate method that we have till date, combined with thermoluminescence cross-verification. That's not a coincidence or a fluke. That's not up for debate. This was iron, smelted, shaped, and used in South India. This isn't the first time a narrative has cracked, but this time it was shattered. Shivaglai is located in Southern Tamil Nadu, an area rich in iron ore deposits, but poor in copper. So this geographical reality shaped its technological path. Unlike North India, where copper was accessible and widely used, South India had to adapt using local available materials. As a result, early communities in this region began working directly with iron. At Shivagalai, there is no evidence of a copper age. The sequence jumps from Neolithic tools to iron artifacts. And this pattern isn't limited to Shivagalai. It is visible at other sites as well like Malia Dumpare, Hallur, and Kodumanal. But Shivagalai is currently the oldest carbon dated site with confirmed iron smelting activity. The presence of charcoal fused with iron slag inside pottery confirms not just use, but on-site production of iron. This development was independent, local, and precedes all known copper-based metallurgical phases in this region. No external influence, no inherited tradition, just a clear technological response 
to regional conditions. The mainstream timeline says that the Iron Age began in Anatolia around 1500 BC and then it spread to India much later, around 1000 BC, during the so-called Vedic period. But the discovery at Sivagalai dates to 3345 BC and this invalidates this sequence entirely. So let's lay it down clearly. Mehargarh in present-day Balochistan, one of the earliest farming settlement in Indian subcontinent, which dates to around 7000 BC. But it was strictly Neolithic and Chalcolithic. No iron. Bhirana in Haryana, often cited as the oldest Harappan site. And it dates between 6000 to 4500 BC. Again, Neolithic to pre-Harappan phases. No iron. And now mature Indus Valley civilization begins around 2600 BC and ends by 1900 to 1500. Urban, literate, expansive, but entirely Bronze Age. No evidence of iron tools or smelting. The Hittites of Anatolia, believed by Western historians to be the first to work with iron, around 1500 BC. The so-called Vedic Iron Age, according to the colonial narrative, begins around 1000 BC marked by texts that refer to Sham Ayas, or dark metal. And then comes Shivagilai Tamil Nadu, carbon-dated iron smelting, 3345 BC, confirmed by three independent labs. That's nearly 2000 years before the Hittites, over 2300 years before the Vedic Iron Age, and even older than the mature phase of Indus Valley civilization. The so-called cradle of metallurgy in West Asia came long after iron was already being smelted in South India. And that raises a much bigger question. If the South had iron before IVC matured and before the so-called Aryan narrative even began, then who was really influencing whom? In North India, the earliest confirmed use of iron appears much later at sites like Malhat, Jusi, and Ataranji Kheda. These are dated to somewhere between 1800 to 1000 BC. But by then, iron working in South India was already over thousands of years old. There is no indication that these northern sites introduced iron to India. In fact, archaeological sequence supports the opposite, a pattern of technology adoption that began in the south and gradually appeared in the Gangetic Plains centuries later. But wait, there's more. The so-called Indo-European Hittites, often credited as pioneers of iron, emerged only around 1500 BC. And even their earliest iron artifacts are limited in volume and scale. No mass melting, no large industrial use. Now compare that with South India, where multiple sites across Tamil Nadu and Karnataka show a consistent tradition of iron production, well before Anatolia even enters the picture. And this opens up a new possibility. That iron didn't flow into India from the northwest. It moved outwards from the southern peninsula towards northern India and eventually beyond, carried by early migrations, trade and cultural exchange. And this aligns with emerging linguistic and genetic models that now suggest movement out of India, not into it. And it reinforces one critical point that India was not a passive recipient of global innovation. India was a source, a technological leader, not centuries behind, but centuries ahead. By now, the evidence is overwhelming. Shivgalai wasn't a tribal anomaly. It was an outlier from a different world. It was part of something bigger, a civilization continuity that stretched across Bharat. Because while the South was smelting iron, the North was mastering urban planning, trade, and granaries. Different timelines, same trajectory. Two arms of one civilizational body, not divided by race or origin, but diversified by geography and resources. Mainstream history splits Bharat into Aryan North and Dravidian South, as if metal, language, and culture crashed in from outside. But the ground tells a different story. There's no innovation layer, only shared rituals, burial customs, and symbolic links from Saraswati in the north to Vegei in the south. Carbon dated iron furnace at Shivagilai predates any north iron, 
by over a millennium. If Vedic texts call iron Shamayas, yet Tamil Nadu had working forges 2000 years earlier. So who really taught whom? This isn't Tamil versus not. It's Bharatiya civilization, multi-core, co-evolving and exporting innovation rather than importing it. It's time our textbook and politicians stopped dividing us and started telling Bharat's whole story. This is it from my side. This is Harry signing off. Stay curious.